Texas municipal courts. So in Texas, there's county courts, there's district county courts, but there's also municipal courts. Municipal courts are essentially referred to as city courts in most cases. They handle all kinds of different things. What I'm gonna talk about specifically here in this video are criminal charges. Municipal court has jurisdiction over tickets or citations where the range of punishment, if you were to be convicted is zero dollars all the way up to five hundred dollars there's no jail as a result a citation unless however it goes into warrant status that's a different issue that i won't be covering in this video but for what you need to know a municipal court citation or a traffic court citation is generally a non-jailable offense there are a variety of types of citations that you could have that would land you in municipal court obviously traffic citations are the most common but you also have more serious citations, so to speak. And frankly, any criminal charge is serious. But on the spectrum of citations, you have anything from a traffic citation all the way up to a disorderly conduct, which is essentially causing a breach of the peace. You have public intoxication charges for either you're a danger to yourself or others as a result of being intoxicated in public. And then you, of course, you have assault by contact, which is essentially where there's an offensive contact that could either be a push, a shove, or even a spitting on someone results in the citation. These are probably the most serious charges you will find in municipal court, and they can have a variety of collateral consequences, right? Right? So assault by contact is probably the most serious citation that's dealt with in municipal courts. It goes back to a push or shove. Sometimes there will even be slaps or fists involved that result in this charge. And because of that, they're highly contested because they can have all kinds of collateral consequences if you were to be found guilty of this charge. Specifically, if there's an association of domestic violence with it, there's something that you have to take seriously, even though, you know, the common misconception is, hey, it's just a ticket. I'll just pay it and be done with it. That's wrong. Okay, you need to consult an attorney. And frankly, although you can represent yourself, it's never advisable to do so because even though it's just a ticket, so to speak, it really isn't just a ticket, okay? These can have reverberating consequences throughout your life, can affect your job. It can affect your right to possess a firearm, potentially, if it's domestic violence related. It could affect immigration. So if you are not a US citizen or you are a permanent resident, or obviously if you're here without legal status, this can certainly affect you. It's gonna affect your ability to remain in the country. So you obviously need to contact an attorney if you have a citation of any kind, frankly. And representing yourself, not only are you unaware of what consequences could happen to you, frankly, any statements you make to a prosecutor, because that's who you're talking to ultimately when you go to court, those statements you make could be used against you. And frankly, you don't really know what the motives of the prosecutor are. You might think you have an innocent explanation as to why you received the citation to begin with, but in the prosecutor's eyes, they could see things very differently and you might've unintentionally incriminated yourself. And again, you just don't wanna be in that situation. So please consult with an attorney. So what happens on appearance? So if you retain an attorney, your attorney will talk with the prosecutor. Interestingly, you don't always have to be present when this happens. In fact, an attorney representing you on a citation in Texas can appear on your behalf without you being present if it's allowed by the court and can even enter you into an agreement if that's been discussed with you in advance. If your attorney has communicated with you and opportunity or an offer or some kind of resolution and they go to court on your behalf, they can enter into that agreement on your behalf. When your attorney appears, they will negotiate your case with the prosecutor. They might only be interested in a conviction or it's something that stays on your record. They might be willing to offer a kind of deferred adjudication probation that ultimately can get dismissed, okay? You do need to consult with an attorney as to what options are available to you and what it means because it varies case by case. And what you also need to know is just because it's deferred adjudication doesn't necessarily mean you're guaranteed for it to be off your record, okay? So you need to clarify with your attorney what the offer, if any, there is on your case and how that might affect you going forward. And if you're fortunate, your attorney may negotiate an outright dismissal on your behalf. Okay, there's a lot of different things that could happen. One thing you should know though, is that a first appearance, your case isn't always resolved. So oftentimes it takes more than one approach to get a resolution in place that everyone is gonna be happy with. If 
there is no resolution in place, then your case can proceed to a jury trial. It can also proceed to a bench trial. Just like with a more serious charge that's jailable, you're entitled to a jury, even on a Class C citation. Most people don't know that, but you are. And so oftentimes, if a case can't be resolved, even on first appearance, it will move to a trial docket, okay? In that instance, any plea offers might be off the table at that point. That's something you should know and you should communicate with your attorney about. Alternatively, just because something is on the trial docket doesn't mean that it won't get resolved in the future or can't be resolved in the future. It's just that you will be expected to show up to court on that day and be prepared to go to trial one way or the other. And if there's one tidbit of information I could provide you, it's important that if you're genuinely interested in getting the best resolution with your citation, or if you are not guilty, frankly, do not just pay the citation and move on. Do not mail in a check. Do not go online and pay the citation if you have genuine concerns about your record, whether or not you should even be found guilty to begin with, because frankly, when you make that payment, most of the time that results in a conviction on your record that you cannot get removed and it will be there, okay? So very important tidbit. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact an attorney. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, you can find us at versustexas.com.